Hey guys, I'm Jay Dupree and today I'm going to show you some secret gaps in the rack uh, that can help you with your slow break. Okay, so uh, this is kind of, this is knowledge that is spread around fast and it originated with Joe Tucker. Uh, so go and look up Joe Tucker's uh, billiards training. Uh, he is a great guy. Uh, but he discovered all of this after hours of just breaking and breaking and breaking in his basement. Uh, so, uh, nine ball rack. We're talking about nine ball here. And we're talking about a slow break. So a slow break, uh, we're just barely getting the wing ball in the corner. And we're trying to stop the one ball over the side pocket. And usually, whatever ball's here, if we're breaking from this side, whatever ball's here, and this nine will make a dead straight lineup into this pocket. So it can be really, really easy to run out. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to make sure the one ball is on the spot. If you don't know the, what that means, it means the intersection bef between this second diamond and this second diamond. That is the spot. And then we're going to make sure everything, if we're breaking from this side where the cue ball is on, making sure this L pattern is all touching each other or frozen. So the one and then the three diagonal balls like that. One, three diagonal balls. Uh, so we are making sure all of those are touching and also a tiny gap between this ball and this ball will help this ball go in. The reason why the, all of these need to be frozen and a gap helps here is because without that, the goal is to move this ball out of this ball's way. If this ball's not here, this ball's heading for the pocket every time. But since this ball's here, it's going to drive it high. So this ball will always go high. If it goes high, you know this is not frozen. Something's wrong with the rack. It's not frozen if this ball goes above the pocket. If it goes below, uh, you did your job right. It, just something that you can't control failed. Uh, so if you did, if, you, if it goes low, you did it right. If it goes high, is something wrong with your rack? Uh, so we're making sure all these are frozen in order to move this ball out, but out of the way before this one starts rolling. And that's why the gap here helps because it slows the energy just barely enough from the one five four uh, to move this first before that. So we're gonna make sure. This is on the spot. We're making sure everything is touching. There's a tiny gap by the five, which will not hurt us, it will help. Everything is touching. And now let's move to the actual break. Okay, so we're gonna re-rack everything and I'm going to rack it. I decided to show you what a break looks like with a bad rack first. So I'm gonna re-rack them and purposely put a gap here. So there is a gap between the eight and the nine. So this ball is gonna go high. I guarantee it. Just like that. You saw how the six ball went above the pocket since that other ball, whatever ball was in uh, below the six, was not able to get out of the way before that ball, since there was a gap in that little energy cap. So now, we're gonna really, really hunker down, make sure everything is frozen, besides that one little spot where it's okay to have a gap. Make sure everything is touching. Looks like we're good. So now that six ball should go right in the hole. I mean the eight ball. I racks to where the eight ball is there. But you see how the eight ball goes right in the hole. And I'll do that every time. And you'll have this awesome layout. The seven passes, everything passes. The hardest part is just the one to the two. Uh, but everything passes. It's just, 
It's just simple to get a ball in on the break. And you'll see this strategy all the time on bar tables. On bar tables, it's almost impossible to miss that ball if you have everything set up correctly. It technically is impossible on any table, but bar tables is much, much easier. Nine foot tables, uh, it, it's still like a 90% thing, but sometimes just the slightest little miscalculation can throw it off since the pocket is further away from the rack. But this rack looks pretty good. Uh, you can either stop, I, I choose to put a little backspin on my slow break. Uh, and our 7-9 didn't line up directly, but our 7 passes into this corner and also goes into the side. Uh, so everything with that is perfectly fine. Uh, if we get from the 1 to the 2 in this rack, we're out. Normally, I like to stop the 1 ball by the side pocket and put a little draw on my cue ball, bring it out to about here. Uh, but that one I just hit with a little bit of stun, and I hit to the left of the rack. Uh, now, it's important that you hit to the left of the rack or whatever direction this is, or you hit it 100% square in the face. Uh, because otherwise, it's like you're breaking from this side, in which the other L track, the one going that way, the one ball and then the three balls going diagonal that way, would need, would need to be in line. Uh, because if you're just cutting the break, if you're going to aim for the right side of the one ball, it's the same thing as if you're breaking over here. Uh, so that can be tough uh, to judge, but always just try to cut it to the left just slightly if you're breaking from the left side of the table. Uh, cut it to the right slightly if you're cut breaking from the right side of the table, uh, just to make sure that uh, your cue ball is accurate. Okay, so there's one way to rack the balls that I really don't like doing, uh, but it can be helpful. So rack them in, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just in numerical order. Obviously with the nine in the middle, but the rest of them are just in numerical order. And it's very, very, very easy to just get an easy one and two. I didn't check the rack very thoroughly, uh, but we're not really focused on making the ball right now. I just want to show you the pattern that these balls lay out in right now. It's always going to look like this. One, two, and then a possible three, nine. Uh, so Corey Duell is amazing at this, at breaking this saw really consistently and always ending up with the one, two, uh, and then the three, nine. And it, it's just unstoppable. It really is. If you get down and you practice this break a ton, honestly, you will be pretty unstoppable unless somebody else's break is better than yours. Because look how easy this out is. Even if you're not shooting the 3-9, this is so easy. And then when the 3-9 lines up directly, you always have the 1 in the side and the 2 in this corner. Uh, so I do not approve of pattern racking. I think that is a bad thing for the game. But... You want to get every advantage that you can get. So you see how easy a break and run is with that out? Our cue ball did not cross this line. It was so easy. And I didn't even have a dead on 3-9 combo. I could have just gone 1, 2, 3, 9. You want to have every advantage you can. So one pattern you should practice if you're intending on doing this slow break is this right here. Just throw out three balls, four technically, one, two, three, nine. So if you practice this, you'll be unstoppable. And if the three nine is not favorable, you can always play the three into that pocket. But this is how I... This is how sometimes I went through Junior Nationals. I had every Hill Hill match, this is the kind of rack uh, that I broke. You obviously don't want to do that. Uh, but every Hill Hill match I had in the Junior National Nine Ball Championships, uh, I broke like that. 
did not lose any one of those matches. I always ran my 1, 2, and then my 3, 9. That's how I won every Hill Hill match. I didn't break like that the whole time because I, I don't really like that. If I did, I probably wouldn't have been in some of those Hill Hill situations. Uh, but this break has definitely gotten me out of some binds. And if you're having a little funk with your break, if it's not working, then go back to this. All right, so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys found it informative. If you did, please click the like button down below. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you can click the subscribe button, then the bell icon right next to it. That'll just send you an email and a notification saying that I've uploaded a new video. Uh, so thank you guys so much for 78,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can get to 80,000. So make sure you smash the subscribe button, share the channel with your friends. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video.